G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and for today's video, I thought we'd try something a little bit different and do some more ChatGPT. This time, seeing if ChatGPT can learn how to use the build row set from JSON and script function. So for those of you who have been daring enough to try out ChatGPT or some similar AI functions, you may have noticed some limitations about how they train these models. For example, on ChatGPT we do have the limitation that the knowledge set does have a limited knowledge of events that occurred after 2021. And well, the build row set from JSON AmpScript function is definitely after 2021, so you probably can't expect too much from it. But it doesn't mean we can't try it out. Let's go build row set from JSON and try it out for ourselves. We'll start our prompt by saying, you are a Salesforce marketing cloud developer. Tell me about the AMP script function. Build row set from JSON. Let's try it out. So as a language model, yes, of course, limitations, but what can we do? Well, JSON string and row set name. Ah, that's not quite right, but we can try that anyway. Here's the code it's given us in AMP script as well. Not a bad try, but I don't think that syntax is gonna work. That's all right, we can try it out though. We'll copy our code and try it out in Content Builder. So over in Marketing Cloud now, in my CAM test block, which is connected to my cloud page so I can refresh it, I can paste in the code that ChatGPT gave us. So here's the code and let's try it out for ourselves. I'll go save and let's run that code with F5. No, didn't think so. Didn't think that was gonna work as ChatGPT doesn't know how to use the build row set from JSON just yet. But where did it go wrong? Well, let's start with there's only two ordinals specified. There is of course the third ordinal to return rows if you chose. So I'll put that in there. My row set is not the correct address. That's not gonna work in this one. What we could do though is take our JSON payload copy it and go into our JSON path online. We can paste our code in and we can try to navigate the location ourselves. Now it's not gonna be the my row set, of course it'll be something different. Dollar sign dot, I think we can use dollar sign dot and then a star in square brackets to return back each of those rows. And check out that path output and we will get our first two rows back, perfect. So we can try it dollar sign dot and then the bracketed star and copy that and make that our correct address for our JSON path, just like that. Now you can try this out though by reprinting our row count. So let's remove that and put in our function to print out our row count. Make sure we do get two rows back. So row count. Let's see if our row set contains two rows. We'll go save and rerun. Okay, two rows, good start. We can check it out by also referencing one of these fields. We've got John and Jane, both for the name. So we'll copy our name. Let's go down from our row set, make a line break, and let's do another function. This time we'll do a field function with a row function. There we are, row, and of course for our row set, at row set, we're going to do the first row, and we'll turn back the name field. Hopefully we'll return back our first row's name, which is John. All right, we'll try it out, we'll go save, and hopefully refresh, and John, perfect. So we can actually make that code work, but ChatGPT didn't quite know how. So how can we change our prompt to train ChatGPT in how to use a build row set from JSON and script function? So back over in ChatGPT, we've got a brand new chat going. Let's have a look at what we need to do to train ChatGPT as to what we want it to try and do. Well, back in our documentation, we do have, of course, our syntax, the properties of our function. Here's some examples and some explanations to how these ordinals each work. We also have some usage examples we can feed it, not to mention some specifications. Now, I have done some checking and some training on this already. I've got for you a prompt we can use, so let me step you through it. You are a Salesforce Marketing Cloud AMP script developer. You will use a new function called build row set from JSON to solve a problem I give you. The build row set from JSON function uses the following syntax. Ordinal one of the function is the JSON string to input. Ordinal two of the function is JSON path expression. For example, we have used my dollar sign flights example from our documentation here. Next, I say we will select all the data in the flights attribute. In the flights price, of course, the next example will return just the one value. There it is there. 
ordinal 3 the function is a flag used to set null set of rows if returned on error and you should always set this to 1 so I'm telling it to always use a 1 in that third ordinal. Now because this function will return a row set similar to another AMP script function the build row set from XML function you will need to cycle through the row set using the for loop and include a field and row function to address the data values so I'm specifying there how to solve the problem. Now write an AMP script code block using build row set from JSON to output a HTML table with four columns one for each of the object attributes and three rows one for each of the objects in the JSON array using the JSON code below. So let's give it some code. Now I've told it I want four columns and three rows and can you guess why? That's what our sample data here has. Four columns, three rows. So here's our sample JSON. Let's copy that now. Go back into ChatGPT and paste it in and let's go submit. Let's see what it says. All right, sure, here's a code block, all right? So good start, we're gonna specify our JSON code, great. There's our JSON path, flights, and then star in brackets. Is that the same here? Yes, it is, okay, good start. Got the correct syntax, JSON for JSON, JSON path for JSON path, and one, correct. The row count, right, if row count's greater than zero, so it's testing to see if there's rows returned. Good on you, ChatGPT. Start our table build with all of our values, great. We'll do a for loop on row count, which of course we've just specified here is the row count, good. We're going to do our row set on row, row to origin, destination and price. Very good, that's looking pretty good, I'll tell you what. So let's try it out, let's copy our code, go back to our code set, paste it in and see what it thinks. Wow, there it is. We've got our origin, destination, price, and our per bag surcharge, and that looks pretty identical to our example code here. Look at that. Well done, ChatGPT. Okay, so one out of one so far for ChatGPT. I mean, that was a little bit too easy, though, because we did, of course, use some example code which we gave it, and the test case was using that example code as well. Let's try using a totally different set of JSON code, which it's never seen before. You can jump over to my javatpoint.com to my JSON example. You can scroll down and find some example code. Let's use JSON example one, my employees data here. Let's copy that and type out a new prompt. Let's say, do the same again, this time with one row for each record and one column for each records value using the following JSON code. All right, let's try that out. So it's never seen employees before. It doesn't know how to use that as a reference point. And it's got it. It's got employees with this star in a box. Let's put the one at the end again on the JSON path. Perfect. It's again testing to see if row count is greater than zero. So are there rows? It does have the table here within. Let's have a look, starts the table, builds the row set, puts out the values. Okay, interesting. So it's only putting out the field of J and the J is the field count of those rows. So it's not gonna put the name of each field though. All right, let's try it out. We'll go copy code. Go back into Marketing Cloud, paste to AMP script and go save and rerun it. Not quite. All right, so what went wrong? Well. Looking back at our code, it's not actually picked up the correct path to then reference each of those field labels. I think what it could have done is it could have printed out the correct column headers and then reference each of the fields correctly. But we can try and re-prompt it. How about we say, that didn't work. Try again, this time using each of the values in the JSON object. The HTML table should have as a two columns for our data set here. Let's have a look. We do have name and email. So it should have two columns, name and email. And how many rows should it have? One, two, three, and three rows and three rows. All right. Apologies, that's all right. Let's try again. So employees, there's our three sets of data, good. Building employees, doing our row count. 
And we do have, all right, our build row set with name and email coming through. It's a bit cleaner, a bit tidier, very similar to our first set of code. So with our little reprompt there, let's go copy code, go back into our marketing cloud code, paste it in and try and refresh. Hey, much better. So we have one, two, three names and one, two, three emails. Okay, so ChatGPT has solved the second one with a slight reprompt, but that's okay. Let's try something a little more complex. Back on our Java T point, let's have a look at our next example. This one here, example two, has a bit more dimensions to it. Let's try and get it to return the three values inside of the menu item. So we'll copy our JSON payload. Let's go back to our ChatGPT and do one more prompt. Um, so let's say, do the same again, creating a HTML table with, and how many columns and rows do you want this time? We're gonna have the value and the on click. So it's gonna be two columns and three rows. Table with two columns and three rows with one row for each of the objects in V. I paste my JSON payload. What is it? The menu item object in the menu item object. All right, let's try that. So we'll try again with a new JSON payload, this time trying to use the menu item, two columns, hopefully one, two, and three rows. Certainly here it is. All right, so once again, good start. JSON path, all right, menu pop-up menu item. Menu pop-up menu item, good address. All right, does our row count, good. Does our value and on click, I didn't tell it to use value on click, but it found it. All right, good job. Did some capitalization though, very interesting camel case there. We are gonna cycle through and again, row count. All right, all right, so copy code. And for one final time, let's paste it in and go save and see what the result is. Very nice, new, open and save, create, open, save. Very nice. So there you have it. Even though ChatGPT had no knowledge of the build row set from JSON MScript function, we can prompt it and train it how to use that function by giving it some code examples and then stepping it through our desired output. And by doing so, we now have a functioning chat bot, which we can give it a JSON payload and return back a HTML code set. Now, of course, we could change that prompt to make it output a CSV file or some other code sets we wanted to, but at least for now, we have a working way to recreate the sample code that we have on our main documentation page for the build row set from JSON. And I hope you found today's video a bit of fun and informative as well. If you have, then please let me know in the comments below with a big thumbs up on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.